One of my personal weird things to do is that I like to see different variations of something that I'm very much keen of. And this weird thing might be one of the reasons why I love the leaked beta so much. Because it shows us a different type of Half-Life 2. But in this video, we'll be looking at some maps for Gmod that show the world of Half-Life 2 before the Combine arrived. Starting off in the city, the changes may not be that apparent, but still the removal of everything Combine related is a critical change. For example, notice how the train station is no longer barred off with chained fences and the station as a whole just feels lively. No security checkpoints, no more trains to Nova Prospect. Little rooms that used to be someone's office or workplace would later be converted into torture cells and monitoring stations for the Metro Cops. Moving outside, it's the classic City 17, filled with greenery, trees and everything's in tip-top shape. And the lack of the citadel sure is one hell of a difference though. That towering monolith gone from the scene makes it much more eerie, to be honest. As if this is a jigsaw puzzle but we're missing a critical piece. The alleyways and streets are vacant of any oppressive police force or long-legged alien monsters. You know, my feelings while recording all of this is how catastrophic the effect of the Combine was on the city and how it must have been across the world. I started to think about the scale of the Seven Hour War and how much firepower it must have took to take down literally every single army on the planet. And with Source's classic lonely vibe, going through some spots gave me premonitions of events that would later take place in these areas. It was a kind of a special feeling where rather than remembering the past, I was instead recalling the future. Canals felt really different here, especially because of the lack of any radiation wastage and the shelling by the combine. This big field without the radiation felt weird to look at because I always went through on it on the airboat, but this time around, it was not needed. Then there's Ravenholm, which looks completely different. Of course, the different time of the day adds to the effect, but the lack of dismembered bodies and constant screamings of monsters makes it much more peaceful. Another major thing lacking here is of course the presence of Father Gregory. Who knows, maybe here, he's with his actual congregation and not the undead one. Then I started to think about how much effort Gregory put in this town to set up the traps later on, because without them, the town felt really barren and different from what I remember. It's kind of chilling how ruthlessly wild this town becomes when Gordon goes through it during the events of the game. The most impacted place I felt were the coast maps. Since the combine didn't arrive and suck out all the water, the water levels at the dock and the beach are normal and now it feels right but not right. Like this is not how I remember it but this is how it should be naturally. 
And again, the whole section just looks so lively. With the addition of the trees and flora, it now looks like a much more lived in place rather than the abandoned ruins we see in the game. That place with the crane section is filled with water and it kind of gives you an idea of how much the combine had to drain to make the water levels of the ocean so low in the game. You'd think, oh yeah, this is the place where we drive the scout car on the ocean floor, but nope, it's all normal now. No combine, no scout car, and no ocean floor to drive on. Between all of this, it's obvious how weird it feels to not see any combine structures, equipment or even propaganda in these places. These just feel like normal well-made Gmod maps if you were someone who never played Half-Life 2. And like I said in the beginning, I love looking at different revisions or variations of things, be it a map or a game or anything at all. And these variations are the best I've seen because it gives you an insight into how things were before the Combine arrived and everything rotted away. One minor complaint or a thing I noticed is that there is a bit of a continuity error in all of this. Let's say Half-Life 1 takes place in either 1998 or 2001, Half-Life 2 takes place 20 years, so that's 2019 or 2021. The Combine invaded Earth right after the Black Mesa incident, which was hypothetically 2001. So if we're seeing the 2021 maps in the retail games, and these are supposed to be the 2001 maps, there's uh, not a whole lot of difference to be honest. I'd expect the landscape to stay the same obviously, but seeing the same shack stand still for 20 years feels kind of off. It's not a huge deal breaker, but I still felt like that should have been brought up. Or who knows, in some cases things do remain the same for 20 years, I don't know. I've linked the collection of these maps in the description below. There are many more compared to the ones shown in this video and you can check it out yourself if you want. But anyway, these maps are iconic. Almost 20 years later after release, they're one of the most well designed maps that ever graced a video game. Each section, each chapter, each level holds a special place in many people's heart. God bless Gabe Newell and the people at Valve. And that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you enjoyed looking at the comparison shots I did. I'm no clicks Philip, but I tried to do my best. Thanks so much for watching, and a big thanks to these benefactors for supporting the channel. Quiltman, Anos98, Walter, Zick, Poli, Unusual, Taylor, Bako, Ryan W, Noclick, Geode, Fisher Grice, TTG, Lamdry, Hawkasolt, Mr. Spabon, Alien Grunt, Mark Jellen, A Normal Street Lamp, TRR Droid, and Bipolet. Thanks again, and see you in the next one.